<laughs> In the mystical realm of Azeroth, a race both feared and misunderstood roams the wilds. These hyena-like humanoids embody a primal blend of savagery and untapped potential. Their reputation is marked by a warlike nature and a brutish demeanor, yet beneath this rough exterior lies a complex society, bound by deep-seated traditions and a fierce sense of loyalty. As we delve into the lore of these fascinating creatures, we uncover the untold stories and hidden depths of the race known as the Knolls. Physically imposing, these creatures typically stand as tall as a young Kodo, or about the height of an average orc standing on the shoulders of a gnome. A distinct characteristic of gnolls is their hunched physique, which lends them a menacing and untamed silhouette. Their necks are thick and muscular, supporting their strong jaws and enhancing their ferocious appearance. Distinguished by a fur marked with a variety of spots, ranging from reddish-brown to greenish-gray, and paired with eyes that span from pale blue to bloodshot red, they are a visually diverse group. Despite their physical prowess, gnolls are often undermined by their limited intellect. Some individuals exhibit a rudimentary grasp of elemental shamanism when they can be bothered to pay attention long enough. This spiritual inclination hints at a complexity in gnoll culture, frequently masked by their brutish behavior. However, they exhibit a form of animal cunning, especially in their social structure, where the strongest and most ruthless members assert dominance of their packs. These alphas do more than just oversee clan activities. They are instrumental in molding the societal norms and practices of their tribe. Some gnolls even carry names passed down from their ancestors, highlighting a sense of lineage and connection commonly overlooked by outsiders. Nevertheless, these creatures are prone to infighting and are easily manipulated as they lack the mental acuity that characterizes their physical strength. Knolls embrace a way of life that hinges on brute force and cunning adaptability in areas where disorder and strife rival the boundless wilderness. They establish simple camps and natural lairs, typically found in remote or rugged terrains far from the more civilized regions of Azeroth. The epicenter of their territorial claims lies in the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor, thriving in diverse landscapes from the dense woodlands of Elwyn Forest to the open plains of Mulgore. Often employing their natural surroundings to enhance their defences, their settlements reflect a rudimentary and nomadic lifestyle. And in a gruesome display of resourcefulness, the Knolls fashion their tents from human skin, utilising it as a form of leather. Although widely regarded as fearless, gnolls are often seen fleeing the battlefield to seek the aid of additional forces from their camp. This tactic can tip the scales in their favor, and such adaptability in combat ensures that they are not easy targets to take down single-handedly, as their retreats are often a prelude to a more aggressive, collective counterattack. Many tribes carve out their existence as autonomous clans in unexplored terrains, such as Feralus and the Alterac Valley, or serve under the employ of goblin cartels and pirate groups. Their interactions with other races, from uneasy alliances to mercenary roles, paint a complex picture of survival and ambition. Sightings of gnolls have been reported as far north as Northrend and as far south as Pandaria indicating a more extensive influence than previously perceived. Additionally, there are even whispers of a tribe that has fallen victim to the cruel might of the Lich King, becoming resurrected undead vessels of their former selves. While these primitive beings possess a level of intelligence that surpasses most beasts, they often don't measure up to human cognitive standards. Speaking primarily in low common, a few individuals can articulate short, broken phrases, they snarl out words like more bones to gnaw on and fresh meat while they size up an unsuspecting traveller with predatory glee. This shortcoming in communication frequently leads to petty squabbles, such as arguing over the size of one's shadow and engaging in trivial contests of strength to assert dominance within their own clan. The animals embrace a carnivorous lifestyle that borders on the extreme. 
Tales are whispered of the hyena folk turning on their own, devouring those cast out from the pack, or even partaking in the flesh of fallen clan members. This macabre ritual, as unsettling as it may seem, demonstrates a fundamental belief of their primal creed. In their eyes, all flesh, irrespective of its origin, is merely sustenance. As mercenaries, gnolls are fierce and formidable fighters, and they are often employed for their strength and brutality, yet their lack of planning and cooperation makes them unreliable for complex tasks. There are instances where they have demonstrated strategic thinking, especially under strong leadership such as during the Knoll War. However, these occurrences are the exception rather than the norm. Yet, there's a belief that if they could set aside their internal strife, they might harness their individual prowess to form a mighty unified force. Beyond their fearsome demeanor and customs lies a rich history of tribal intricacies waiting to be explored. As the sun rises over the rugged landscapes of Azeroth, casting long shadows over the diverse Knoll territories, we stand on the brink of uncovering more knowledge about these iconic creatures. The Knolls of Azeroth are a race marked by a history of chaos, resilience, and an unexpected depth of culture. From disorganized bands to a formidable force under unified leadership, their journey through this world's past is one of adaptability and survival instincts in a world teeming with ceaseless conflict. Initially perceived as simple-minded brutes, their lineage and societal structures suggest a deeper, more complex ancestry. The theory, posited by Bran Bronzebeard, hints at a possible descent from an ancient hyena guardian, indicating their presence in Azeroth's history is far from recent. Beyond these theories, much of the Knoll's early legacy remains shrouded in mystery, with concrete evidence scarce and often lost to the sands of time. This lack of definitive information has given rise to various speculations and legends, each adding to the already elusive aura surrounding their origins. A pivotal moment in the history of these animals was the Knoll War, occurring 75 years before the opening of the Dark Portal and the eruption of the First War. This period marked a rare instance of unity among the Knolls under the command of Pack Lord Garfang. Garfang, a leader of unprecedented cunning among the hyena-like folk, united the scattered packs of the southern region of the Eastern Kingdoms into a formidable regiment. With strategic acumen, they launched vicious raids into the heartlands of the Kingdom of Stormwind, targeting the vital regions of the Red Ridge Mountains, Duskwood and Elwyn Forest. The conflict evolved into a gruelling war of attrition, with Stormwind's forces increasingly overwhelmed by the vast number of Knoll invaders. Meanwhile, the flourishing region of Westfall fell victim to the pack's ruthless raids. King Barathan Rin, burdened with despair, witnessed the rapid depletion of his kingdom's resources due to the Knoll onslaught. The crisis intensified as even Stormwind City, the heart of this realm, was besieged. Demonstrating unexpected military shrewdness, the Knolls managed to contain the bulk of the city's army within and near the capital. In this desperate hour, Barathan made a bold decision. Spurning the aid of neighboring human realms, he led a covert strike into the Red Ridge Mountains, targeting Garfang's stronghold. There, in a fierce battle, the king personally ended the Pack Lord's reign, a move that plunged the Knolls' hierarchy into chaos. With no single leader to unite them, the tribes quickly turned to infighting within their own ranks. The royal victory instilled a deep sense of assurance in their capability to face any future threats to the kingdom. This newfound sense of self-reliance, born in the aftermath of the Knoll War, was about to be tested to its very limits. Unbeknownst to the humans of Stormwind, the long shadow of the First War was drawing near, a conflict that would soon engulf the entire region in unprecedented chaos. In recent times, the Knolls remain a force to be reckoned with and continue to mark their territory in modern-day Azeroth. Their adaptability to different environments has enabled them to establish new strongholds. These regions have seen an upsurge in Knoll activity, contesting the control of vital resources with other native creatures and factions. 
While the Knoll's current presence is unmistakable, the true extent of their influence and the roots of their civilization in Azeroth's distant past continue to elude historians and adventurers alike, making their story a subject of ongoing research among those seeking to unravel the mysteries of this legendary race. As we venture into the unpredictable world of the Knolls, our path leads us through the diverse territories of Azeroth, where each pack plays a unique role in shaping the land's destiny. From windswept plains to shadowy forests, many of these regions echo with the tales of these clans. This exploration reveals how these individual tribes, each with their own customs and strategies, have adapted to the lands they inhabit. Our journey begins in an unexpected corner of Azeroth, a place where shadows linger and the past haunts the present. Here, in the Ghostlands, amidst an eerie silence and the remnants of battles long past, we encounter the Black Poor Clan. This lesser-known, yet remarkably assertive group has claimed the Underlight Mines as their own, displacing the mine workers with an unexpected show of coordinated strength. Consisting of scavengers and shamans, the Black Paws have developed a peculiar fascination with the mineral known as Underlight, a rare ore found exclusively in these tunnels. The clan's unusual interest in the ore, far from their typical nomadic behavior, suggests a deeper plot at play. Are their actions truly self-motivated, or are the gnolls influenced by a more cunning and hidden force yet to reveal itself? The mineral's mysterious properties have also caught the curiosity of the local blood elves, who see its potential as a weapon against the scourge plaguing the region. With a firm grip on their territory, the tribe shows no signs of retreat, casting a shadow of uncertainty over the Ghostlands. Their presence sets the stage for future events that could once again reshape the fate of the region, for better or worse. As we venture from the Black Poor Clan, our travels take us to a vastly different setting. In the rugged and scenic landscapes of the Red Ridge Mountains, two distinct Knoll tribes carve out their legacies amidst a backdrop of conflict and survival. First, we encounter the Red Ridge Pack, once led by the formidable Garfang and known for their pivotal role in the Knoll War. The death of their chieftain plunged the tribe into disarray leading to infighting that drastically weakened their numbers. The feared gnolls were reduced to mere pockets of survivors scattered across the kingdom, never to rise as a major threat again. In the present day, under the leadership of Yowler, the pack adapts through opportunism, notably by pilfering from the locals of Lakeshire. The cataclysm brought yet another shift in their strategy, and the Red Ridge Knolls entered into an unlikely alliance with the Black Rock Clan as they planned an audacious invasion of the nearby human settlements. This bold move marked a new era in the history of the pack, one where old rivalries were set aside for greater ambitions. In contrast, the Shadowhide Clan forges its own destiny under the indirect command of the dark sorcerer Morganth. Banished from Stormwind, the wizard constructed the Tower of Ilgalar where he established his arcane dominion in Redridge. In this tower, he uses his illicit powers to gather a small army of gnolls led by Lieutenant Fangor to serve his malicious biddings. Morganth communicates with the gnolls through magical pendants, binding the tribe to his will. This connection not only ensures unwavering loyalty from the clan, but also cloaks the sorcerer's true intentions leaving allies and enemies alike to wonder about the full extent of his control and the dark magics at play. Together, the stories of the Red Ridge Pack and Shadowhide Clan highlight the ongoing struggles and different directions the many Knoll tribes of Azeroth might take. They showcase their resilience and creativity amidst increasing challenges to their survival, yet also their vulnerability to exploitation. Our exploration brings us to the rolling plains of Mulgore, where the tranquil beauty of the landscape contrasts starkly to the tension emanating from the plains. Here, the Pale Mane tribe, a group of blue-furred gnolls, has made their home, staking claim to the cave known as Pale Mane Rock, 
and establishing camps along the cliffs leading to Red Cloud Mesa. The clan is known for their practiced skinners, poachers and tanners, and in their pursuit of leather have been relentlessly hunting the wildlife of Mulgor. The Tauren, traditionally respectful of nature's balance, believe deeply in the cycle of life and death, a circle where each exists in harmony with the other. Yet, the actions of the Pale Main Knolls disrupt this delicate balance, and efforts by the Tauren to communicate and seek a peaceful resolution with their leader, Chieftain Snagglespear, have been met with much resistance from the pack. This unfortunate impasse leaves the Tauren with no choice but to take more direct measures to restore the natural order and protect the sanctity of Mulgor. In the mist-shrouded forests of Tirisfall Glades and Silverpine, a chilling tale unfolds. Once belonging to the realms of the living, the Rothide tribe succumbed to the Lich King's plague and were resurrected as undead minions of the Scourge. At first glance, they might resemble their living kinsfolk, but a closer look reveals a macabre transformation. Their withered skin and patchy fur barely conceal the protruding bones and rotted flesh. Their eyes, glowing with an unnatural yellow hue, hold a sickly, unsettling look. Most rot-hide gnolls are engaged in a morbid task for the Scourge, looting corpses to bolster their unholy army from the mass graves in the area. These cemeteries, originally intended to contain the vast number of deaths from the initial outbreak of the plague, now mark the beginning of a new grim chapter in the history of these blighted lands. Some gnolls, however, have fallen under the direct leadership of Thule Ravenclaw, a prominent figure in service of the Lich King, adept in necromantic magic. These undead individuals carry out raids against the Forsaken with their central stronghold in the abandoned keep on Fenris Isle. In a disturbing symphony, the Rot Hyde Pack now haunts the abandoned farms and the deep forests, serving the Prince of Darkness in the afterlife, eternally lurking in the shadows of their cursed land. As we journey from the somber realms of the rot hide knolls, we venture southward to the ever murky swamps of the Kazmodan region. Here, the Mosshide tribe, under the command of Norbone, thrived amidst the flooded plains of the wetlands. His pack captured and consumed any adventurers they discovered prowling the marshlands. However, the Mosshide's dominance faced a dramatic shift with the ascension of Deathwing. The ensuing destruction of the Stone Rort Dam caused floods that drastically altered their domain, displacing their camps. Consequently, the Knolls were forced to settle in the higher altitudes of Loch Madan under the new leadership of Chieftain Sagepaw. In this new setting, the clan finds themselves orchestrating a series of disruptive schemes and cunning raids. Their most audacious act involved the theft of an unspecified amount of ingots from the Ironforge Royal Treasury. What's more, the Mosshide Knolls have since forged the Axis of Awful, an alliance with Trogs, Kobolds and Murlocs of the neighbouring lands. This coalition, marked by boldness and cunning, had grand ambitions. Its members were to be armed with weapons forged from copper, mined by the Kobolds, making them a united force to be reckoned with. Their alliance was eventually disbanded as the members of the Axis of Awful, embroiled in disagreements and clashing ambitions, saw their discussions turn sour. This growing discord led to outright conflict, dissolving any semblance of unity and effectively terminating the coalition. Turning our focus to the lush woodlands of Feralis, the Woodpaw clan finds itself in a constant struggle for existence. Native to these forests, the Knolls are led by their formidable alphas and are perceived as an unpredictable threat by the Night Elves and Tauren inhabiting the area. The Woodpaws' lives are defined by their drive for survival and every day is a fight for territory and resources. The Knolls engage in skirmishes with travelers and adventurers and they clash fiercely with the local yetis, viewing them as intruders of their habitat. The pack's greatest challenge comes from the south. The writhing deep, a site teeming with the insectoid Silithid, is a source of unending conflict. The aggressive Silithid 
are encroaching on their lands, driving the Knolls to desperate measures. In response, the Wood Paws, fueled by a frenzied need to protect their community, relocated their tribe northward, closer to Camp Mohachi, escalating tensions with the local Tauren. To make matters even worse, rumours swirl of a rare two-headed flying creature haunting the skies of Feralis. Tales of its destructive power, including the annihilation of an entire Woodpaw camp, have spread far and wide. These gnolls, despite their aggressive demeanour, are creatures unwittingly caught in a web of contention, with dangers lurking from every corner of their forested home. Moving from Kalimdor to the Eastern Kingdoms, our path leads to the Hillsbrad foothills, revealing a story of change and adaptation. The Mudsnout tribe, guided by their shaman leader Robark, has embraced a unique way of life centered around cultivating and protecting the Mudsnout blossoms, giant white mushrooms with lethal properties to the living. Robark, a figure of mystique, oversees the knolls as they tend to these mushrooms, guarding against intruders who seek to harness their interesting characteristics. Intriguingly, the mudsnout's relationship with the spore-bearing fungi hints at a complex understanding of life and death. They are aware of the blossom's restorative effects for the undead, and this knowledge shapes their interactions with the world beyond their fields, particularly improving their position when dealing with the Forsaken, from an outsider's perspective, the Mudsnout Knolls are a tribe enshrouded in mystery and contradiction. Far from mere savages, they are the guardians of a toxic discovery, living at the crossroads of the living and the supernatural, highlighting their versatile and often mysterious connection with the places they consider home. Our adventure leads us northward, to the Western Plaguelands, where the Red Pine tribe has made a significant return to their ancestral grounds. Largely dispelled of the scourge that once ravaged the region, the lands are now mostly cleansed. Seizing this opportunity, the Red Pine Knolls are eager to rebuild and establish a new home in their once forsaken homeland. The clan, while causing trouble for the nearby Argent Crusade lumberjacks, are driven by a desire to reclaim resources they view as rightfully theirs, resources crucial for the reconstruction of their community. They operate under the cover of night, skillfully avoiding direct confrontation as they gather lumber to build shelters and fortify their recuperated territory. A separate faction of the pack has taken over Talon's tower, claiming the once Argent controlled area. Their foray into necromancy, facilitated by a renegade mage, is a clear example of their willingness to embrace powerful and dark arts to fulfill their ambitions. However, this decision also highlights their naivety and susceptibility to manipulation. The Knolls, lacking a deep understanding of the necromantic complexities and consequences, are easily swayed by the persuasive promises of power and protection offered by the mage. This manipulation becomes a double-edged sword for the Red Pine tribe. On one hand, it grants them newfound abilities and a sense of empowerment. On the other, it exposes them to risks they are ill-equipped to foresee or understand. In this corner of Azeroth, these resilient and resourceful gnolls strive to re-establish themselves in a land they once called home, utilizing whatever means necessary to ensure their community's survival and growth. Our exploration of the different knoll packs takes an intriguing turn. In the harsh, snow-covered landscape of Alterac Valley, the Wildpaw clan persists in the face of adversity. Having survived a catastrophic avalanche that buried a vast part of their territory, they now inhabit the Wildpaw caverns. These caverns, perched atop a frozen waterfall and in the shadow of Frostwolf Village, are more than a mere lair. They are a crucial point in a larger, relentless struggle that engulfs the valley. Here, in this secluded part of the mountains, an unceasing battle rages, a clash of wills and warfare between factions vying for dominance over the frigid terrain. Under the presumed leadership of Grimtooth, the Wildpaw Alphas and Mystics have made this unique theatre of combat their home. To the Horde forces stationed at Frostwolf Village, the Knolls present a constant challenge. 
The underground passages, located near the Horde's initial point of engagement in the battleground, functions as a crucial proving ground. For newcomers seeking to prove their dedication to the Frostwolf clan, successfully navigating the perilous and icy paths of the Wildpaw Cavern is a rite of passage, a trial that many brave, yet not all, succeed. Only the most determined combatants manage to overcome the Knoll obstacles and retrieve the faction's banner, thereby earning the esteemed Frostwolf Initiate's insignia. The Wildpaw tribe is a group of survivors and unintentional participants in the perpetual conflict that defines the Alterac Mountains. Perched high in the mountains of the Storm Peaks, we come across the Savage Hill tribe, the only presence of gnolls on this frozen continent. As a clan primarily composed of brutes and scavengers, they are constantly in search of resources to sustain their harsh existence in the unforgiving climate of Northrend. In a bid to survive in the inhospitable terrain of the Snowblind Hills, the pack has taken to pilfering engineering components from a neighboring goblin town, either for their own use or as valuable items to be traded for other necessities. This act of thievery, however, has sparked a tit-for-tat struggle, with the goblins retaliating by seizing the knoll's precious food supplies. The ongoing conflict has placed Narlhide, the tribe's mystic leader, in the crosshairs of the aggrieved goblins, who now seek his elimination. As the snow continues to fall over the rugged peaks and valleys of Northrend, the future of the Savage Hill tribe hangs in the balance. In this frigid and ruthless landscape, where each day is a battle for survival, the stakes have never been higher. As we venture across the great seas towards the remote, northeastern reaches of Kunlai Summit, we come face to face with a very different kind of knoll presence. Unlike the more nomadic tribes of Azeroth we've encountered so far, with their traditional culture and societies, the Black Mane mercenaries represent an ambitious lifestyle not often seen in Knoll hierarchy. The clan under the command of the infamous Captain Ripflesh is actually a subordinate group within the Zandalari tribe. They follow orders from the high-ranking overlords to pillage supplies from the natives, but their tale took a darker turn as Ripflesh brutally slaughtered all Pandaran inhabitants of the region. The captain's strategy against any who dares challenge his tactics involves using Knoll decoys purchased from the Dark Moon Fair, a choice that poorly reflects on his smarts. Confident that the decoys will trick his opponents, Rip Flesh's defeat proves otherwise. A bill of sale found among his possessions mockingly states the decoy's effectiveness may depend on the intelligence of the opponent, clearly not the captain's strong suit. In the wake of the reckless devastation left by the Knolls, one is left to wonder, how will the Pandaren reclaim peace and harmony in their shattered homeland? As the Zandalari overlord bellows orders from a distance, the Black Mane mercenaries continue their relentless assault, leaving the once serene Zuchin strand in ruins. Concluding our exploration of Knoll history, we arrive in the verdant region of Elwyn Forest, where the River Poor Pack stands out like no other. The pack, infamous for its chieftain and ties to a band of human bandits and pirates, dominates southern Elwyn Forest and large parts of Westfall. The clan has earned a well-known reputation among the local inhabitants, becoming a notorious presence in the lands of the Kingdom of Stormwind. By launching frequent attacks on unsuspecting travelers and raiding local farmsteads, the Knolls not only sow fear and chaos, but also directly undermine the economic stability and security of Stormwind's outlying territories. These aggressive actions, coupled with their unexpectedly sophisticated weaponry, have sparked rumors among the Stormwind guards. There's a growing suspicion that the Defiers Brotherhood may be arming and guiding the Knolls, strengthening their grip of the region. Under the leadership of Edwin Van Cleef, the Brotherhood seeks not only human allies, but also the loyalty of more brutish forces. As the threat escalates, the Stormwind military seeks to eliminate this menace, a task proving more challenging than anticipated due to the cunning and resilience of the pack emboldened by this underground alliance. In response, 
the marshals have begun to employ the help of any willing adventurer who happens to pass by, enlisting their aid in a concerted effort to make an end to the Knoll presence in the area. In the wake of the chaos wrought upon the area by the River Poor Pack, one shadow looms largest. Our tale ends with the one known as the Knoll King, the one they call Hogger, whose fame and notoriety eclipses all within the Eastern Kingdoms. As the chieftain of the River Paws, Hogger's very name sends a shiver down the spine of both new and old adventurers, marking a rite of passage for many. This individual's infamy didn't arise from hidden treasures or mythical spoils, but from his fierce combat skills. Naive explorers, unaware of his elite status among the tribe, often fell swiftly to his overwhelming might, solidifying his reputation as an early, intimidating challenge. The pack leader's tale took an unexpected turn when he was finally defeated and arrested by General Marcus Jonathan, the High Commander of Stormwind's Defense Forces. He was confined within the prison complex of the Stormwind Stockade, but following his captivity, Hogger soon led a resurgence among the inmates, ultimately taking over the stockade with his fellow imprisoned Knolls. The aftermath of Hogger's arrest plunged the Riverpore ranks into chaos, leaving them leaderless and vulnerable to the forces of Stormwind. In the wake of this unrest, Django Spothide rose to prominence, leading the remaining Knolls of Westfall and Elwyn Forest. Under Django, the pack continued their alliance with the Defias Brotherhood, now led by Vanessa Van Cleef, the daughter of Edwin. Today, the legend of Hogger lives on. For many who ventured close to his domain, Hogger was their first formidable foe that tested their mettle and often required a banding together of swords and spells. His name and spirit continue to echo through the landscape, where his menacing presence will forever be a part of the forest's lore. As we draw the curtains on the tale of the Knolls, we step back from the untamed wilds of Azeroth, where these hyena-like creatures, driven by instinct, have carved their place in history. From their disorganized brute force to their unexpected sly intellect, the various tribes embody a paradox of hidden rituals and primal savagery. Overall, the Knolls are a complex race, characterized by their overwhelming strength. Their social structure is deeply rooted in the law of the strongest, and while they are generally perceived as lacking in intelligence, they have demonstrated time and again their display of strategic insight and planning. This is the end. Thank you for joining me on this journey into their world, where every snarl and growl tells a story of survival, strength, and the raw essence of nature. Until next time, dear wanderers, and may your adventures bring you face to face with the wild heart of Azeroth.